So there's many things to consider when you're choosing university. If you're choosing a specific subject, it's also really important that you should consider that this is the ranking of the whole university and not that specific subject. Chinese universities have been rising up the rankings very fast, and there's now almost 500,000 international students studying in China. I'm going to look at the top universities in China and look at different rankings, and the top six especially. But make sure you don't choose a university just on the rankings. I'm going to explain more in a bit. The academic ranking of world universities, QS world rankings, and the Times Higher Education. They all have a slightly different formula in how they evaluate universities. The ARWU, Academic Ranking of World Universities, for example, is more about research rather than teaching. The top six universities in China, you have University of Science and Technology of China, Zhejiang University, Fudan, Shanghai Jiao Tong, Tsinghua, and Peking University. These are agreed on as the top six, with one and two being Tsinghua and Peking University, which is widely agreed on in the rankings but they all differ on slightly different parts depending on what they look at in the ranking. Now, the rankings I'm going to link in the description, but I also want to introduce some of the government plans because the government has big targets. Now, there's three main plans. The Project 211 was created in 1985, and this is 100 universities. Now it is 116 universities. And the target was to develop the universities by giving them a higher level of funding. Project 985, was created in May 1998, which is why it's called 985. And this is to develop 39 top universities. C9 League is like the Ivy League, and it includes nine universities in China. This is University Science Technology China, Fudan University, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, Harbin Institute of Technology, Zhejiang University, Tsinghua University, Peking, Nanjing, and Xi'an Jiao Tong University. And then we have the double first class university, which was created in 2015. And this is a combination of two different plans, the world first class university plan and the first class academic discipline construction plan, which were combined together. Now the target was to develop 42 world-class universities by 2050 and 465 world-class disciplines at 140 schools. And, and this was divided into different categories, a class A, class B universities and the double first class discipline universities, which is 95 in total. Now these different plans is basically to make the universities international and to develop them. These initiatives are important because this is the government policy. It demonstrates the universities that the government is giving more support and investing the most money into. Those universities with more government support are going to have more facilities and resources and are more likely to have a better experience and attract more talented professors and students. You can see the full list of these universities in the description below. Now the ranking in China. How do you evaluate a university? Be careful about reading too much into the ranking. And even the rankings themselves, they say that they should be used as a general guide only. So there's many things to consider when you're choosing a university. If you're choosing a specific subject, it's also really important that you should consider that this is the ranking of the whole university and not that specific subject. For example, your MBAs have their own rankings and each subject has different rankings. So there's some universities which may be lower ranked overall, but they're much higher for the university ranking. Also, it's important to remember that the experience as an international student is going to be different. It's not necessarily according to the ranking. You might have a better experience at a lower ranked university than a top ranked university. The rankings don't necessarily look at the experience as an international student. Well, CKGSB is not included in the ranking for MBA. They choose not to participate in the ranking, but they are still one of the top MBA programs in China. And Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University, University of Nottingham Ningbo, China, these two universities also are not ranked as highly as they should, partly because these are international universities. It takes time for them to, be, to rise up in the ranking, but if you want to know where these universities are ranked, you can look at the, the parent universities and see where they are ranked, and it can give you a better idea of how highly ranked these universities are. The culture is also important. Now we had a student who applied to Tsinghua and Peking University and he was trying to decide between which one he would study at. He got a scholarship to study at both. And the decision came down to the culture of the university. 
because Peking University is, has a strength in humanities. Possibly the culture is more creative, whereas in Tsinghua the culture is more related to engineering. So it's more of a execution and getting things done culture. So comparing these two universities, maybe like a right brain, left brain, and he decided to choose Peking University out of those two universities. But it depends on each person because we all have our own values. And so it's important to choose based on the culture. It doesn't mean one culture is better than the other. It's just different and it can have a different match according to different students. Now there's a few differences between Chinese universities and Western ones. These universities, these top six universities, are so competitive and so difficult to get into, especially Peking and Tsinghua University. In China, there's so much competition to get into these universities. It's unparalleled in the whole world. When I was studying at Peking University, one of my friends scored the top marks in her whole province and she got accepted into this university. She scored the top marks in the Gaoka exam, which is so competitive. Now, the tuition fee is also very affordable compared to internationally and in China, it can even be more expensive to go to kindergarten than to go to universities. There's lots of programs in English in these universities which you might not realize, although the language in China is in Chinese. Now the culture is quite interesting. If you're studying in the university, the experience will be different to if you're studying in a Western university. One of the differences is the teacher-student relationship is definitely different. You'll have a much more personal relationship and there's not such a big divide between public and personal life and this is the same in China in work and personal which this kind of blurred together. This can also be a good thing if you're looking for work opportunities. You can ask for assistance with your teachers. How do you apply to these universities? It's definitely not very simple to find the information and we have founded a platform called China Admissions where you can search all of the universities and programs. You can find the information in English and you can apply online for free. I'm going to give a link in the description with more information. I also have a few tips if you want to apply to the universities. Make sure you apply early because you can often apply early and it will definitely increase your chance, especially for a scholarship. There's a lot of scholarships in China and so it's definitely good to apply as early as possible. The earlier you apply, the less competition there is. It's very important that you understand the universities that you're applying to and make sure you do really good research. This can definitely help when you're applying so that you can tailor your application. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment below.